Hi everybody, Brandon Nail, founder of freedomwealth.org. And today I want to talk to you guys about what it takes to be a successful real estate investor. And this conversation that we're going to have is based primarily off of a conversation that I had with my July Entrepreneur of the Month, Sam Harrison. Uh, he owns a property management company and has been a, a landlord for over 20 years now. So today we're looking at what it takes to successfully own rental properties. And the first thing that Sam said you need to ask yourself is what's the end goal? And that's so important is because where you wanna be it determines how you have to go about it. So Sam originally started off small, like most people do, and he bought up five different houses and was doing doing well, he was making money on all of them, but he decided that he wasn't making enough money for it to be worth it because he was managing all of them by himself. So he was like, you know what? I need to get to 50 houses to make this something that is really worthwhile. And with that came a shift in the way he was handling his business. So when you're trying to get to 50 houses, you can't manage all the properties as well. You have to hire a property management company. You also can't afford to buy 50 houses the same way you bought five houses. So Sam got creative after deciding he wanted to get to 50. And what he started doing was finding potential properties and modeling how much they'd be worth after renovations. And then found a bank that would give him 80% of the after renovation price up front. So for example, if Sam were to buy a house that was on the market for $50,000 and then estimated that the value would be $80,000 after repairs, then the bank would loan him up front $64,000 or 80% of $80,000. What that does is it allows Sam to buy the house without putting any money down and also do some of the renovations without putting any money into it. And you're like, okay, so how is that possible? How can I buy a house without any money down? Well, the reason he could do that was because it was actually considered to be a commercial loan and the loan is collateralized by the rental property in itself. So that was how Sam was able to buy five houses pretty quickly without putting any money down. Ultimately, Sam didn't get to 50, but he did get to 13. And he, he said that his downfall was that instead of, like we talked about, handing those properties over to a property management company to handle, he was managing all 13 by himself making it extremely difficult to continue to expand. Um, so understanding what you want out of your real estate investing career and journey is the number one thing you have to do before you can really be a successful real estate investor. So once you've figured out what it is you ultimately want to get to, now it's time to buy. So. This can be very scary for a lot of investors because they're afraid that they're gonna buy a house that they can't turn a profit on. And it's a real fear. Um, but all you can do is do your due diligence and run your numbers and then you have to trust that you did the work that was needed up front. And as UFC fighter Nate Diaz says, don't be scared, homie. So, um, one formula that Sam used when he was still buying rental properties was the rule of 1.5. So what the rule of 1.5 is, is if Sam was looking to buy a house for $50,000, times that by 1.5 and you get $75,000. And then what that means is you need to be able to rent it for $750 a month. And if you can do that, you should be able to be a cash flow positive home with that. So that's the rule of 1.5, and it's a real simple rule. There's not much to it, uh, but it's an effective way to kind of gauge um, if you're going to be able to be profitable in a house. So how do you figure out that rule of 1.5? Well, what you do is you have to look at comparables in the area 
to see what they're running for um, because that's really the only way to know if that 1.5 is a reasonable number to ask and rent monthly. Now we've talked about understanding what you want out of your journey and as well as we've talked about a few different ways to know if you should buy a house or not. But now we have to talk about when you're actually a homeowner and a couple tips that Sam had for people that have taken a dive into rental properties is first of all, manage your first one or two houses on your own. And the reason for that is he feels that you need to have done it. That way when you do end up with a property management company, you know what they're talking about when they bring you to these issues. And you know if what they're doing is actually gonna fix the issue and you know if they're trying to take advantage of you by charging you more than it really should cost. So that's his number one rule for rental property owners is manage your own properties to start. The second tip revolves around tenants and that is do background checks, do credit checks, do former um, eviction notices, check if there's any of those, as well as um, require a recent pay stub. And all that is just to cover yourself and make sure that the tenant that you're potentially gonna let live in your house isn't gonna not pay you, isn't gonna destroy um, the property, isn't gonna bring around different a population that you don't want in your house. So those are two really good tips for first time landlords that a lot of people may skip over. The final two tips of managing a property that Sam provided were both focused on the security of the property when it's vacant. So the first one is, is never put a for rent sign up in the yard because that tells anybody that may be looking to rob some somewhere that that location is vacant and they can go in without being disturbed. And the second one was leave the utilities on always, regardless of if that there's a tenant in the space or not. And the reason that is, is because then you can leave the lights on. So combining those two things of not having a front sign and having lights on in the house, it makes it appear to just someone that'd be driving by or casing a neighborhood that people still live there and can be really beneficial in helping you avoid any damages or theft while your property is vacant. So those are the tips and tricks of becoming a successful real estate investor from Sam Harrison, our July Entrepreneur of the Month. And I hope these are helpful for you and we will be bringing you more content here soon. Uh, if you don't already, please do subscribe to our blog, www.freedomwealth.org. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter and follow us on Instagram. So thanks for tuning in guys. Talk to you soon.